Hello everyone, my name is Riley Watson, and today I will be teaching you about MRSA, Facts, and Prevention. And of course, this is the health teaching demonstration for Health 301, Intro to Health Education. The lesson objectives for this presentation are to inform college students about the relativity of MRSA, to educate students on the facts and symptoms of MRSA, and also to discuss the methods that it is spread and eventually taken care of. I know I first heard of MRSA whenever I was in high school and playing different sports, and some of you may have heard of it the same way that I did. Um, but in the, in the top left-hand corner of this slide, this is what a picture of MRSA could start out as, which is just looking like a bug bite. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, of course, this is what it can lead to look like and cause even more health problems. The facts and symptoms of MRSA. MRSA means methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is a type of staph infection bacteria. And of course, the MR in MRSA is methicillin-resistant, and this means that it is resistant to antibiotics. So you cannot take any sort of antibiotic to eventually get rid of this infection. Anyone can get MRSA, although the risk increases with activities or surroundings that involve crowds, shared objects, and contact with others. And of course, the infection tends to start as swollen red bumps that look like pimples, bug bites, spider bites, or even just a red bump or rash. Some symptoms include warm to the touch, full of pus or other type of bodily drainage, and usually accompanied by a fever. They may easily turn into a painful abscess and tend to burrow deep into the body, causing life-threatening infections. And some of these life-threatening infections may possibly lead to death if they are not taken care of. The causes and risks, this bacteria is found on the skin or in the nose of a, a third of the population. So you could just be carrying MRSA and not even know that you have it in your body, which would mean that you don't have a sore or pimple or anything like that. MRSA is generally harmless unless there is a cut or wound that it enters, which can make that cut or wound worse. And usually it only then causes minor problems in generally healthy people. Since this bacteria is usually spread by contact and sharing personal items, there are multiple risk factors, which include being hospitalized, having an invasive medical device, residing in a long-term care facility, participating in contact sports, living in crowded or unsanitary conditions, men having sex with men, and using intravenous drugs. The prevention of MRSA. To prevent this infection, you should cover wounds with clean, dry bandages until it is healed. This will limit contact with anyone that possibly has MRSA or possibly stop you from spreading it to anyone else. Do not pop or pick the MRSA sore, and of course this is only if you have MRSA, but if you do have a cut or wound, you should also make sure that you do not pick at it because it will open it again and possibly you could possibly contract MRSA. Safely discard used bandages and other first aid materials in the trash. This is important so that you do not spread it if you have it any further, but also to just throw them away because, of course, you've had them on a cut or wound. Wash your hands often. Avoid sharing personal items. Clean clothes after worn for practices or games. Shower immediately after practices and games. Of course, this can remove bacteria from your body. And do not inject drugs and other paraphernalia. Some of the people at risk are of the Others who share items such as towels or razors, and this can include deodorant, individuals who inject illegal drugs, people who had surgery in the past year, children in daycare, members of the military, people who have gotten tattoos, recent influenza infections, and college students in dormitories. And of course, that last one, that's if you do not clean your room regularly or you have people over and you do not clean, that can really, you can really spread it that way. So athletes tend to get MRSA more than regular people, especially athletes that are involved in contact sports such as football, wrestling, basketball, soccer, and lacrosse, anything like that. Um, and this quote from the CDC says, Athletes with active infections or open wounds should not use whirlpools, therapy pools, and other water facilities such as swimming pools that are not cleaned between uses and until infections and wounds are healed and of course this is because if you get into one of those pools and you have MRSA it can still linger in the water um if it tend if your sore is open and you of course you don't have a band-aid on 
and then if someone gets in after you, that can cause them to contract it also. And all athletes should do the following to prevent infection. Shower immediately after participation. Shower before using any pool. Wash and dry uniforms after every use. Keep wounds covered and report possible infections to your school nurse, healthcare providers, and or parents and gu your guardian. In general, athletes should be excluded if they have contracted MRSA and it cannot be properly covered. And of course, this can tend to lead to um, infection of other people. So question one. How do you contract MRSA? I'm going to pause right now quick so that you can answer or you can pause this video. And the answer to this question is D, both A and B, skin-to-skin -skin contact and sharing personal items. I did not mention coughing and sneezing as a possible way to contract it. Question number two, what are the symptoms of MRSA? And the answer to this one is D, all of the above. And of course, I mentioned all of these symptoms in the slide, um, facts and symptoms. And question three, how is MRSA prevented? And of course, the answer to this one is E, both A and B. And of course, I did not mention that you should clean clothes after two wears. It sh they should be cleaned after each wear. And these are my references. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.